Hello, hello. Now, before 0 0.5.3 hit, I started my low tier uh, series, and I see no reason to end it just because another patch has hit. I just some things have just changed. So, with no further ado, I will start with my USDD introduction. Now, USDDs play very differently from uh, Japanese DDs. Japanese DDs are generally much easier to play because basically you only need to torp whenever the torps are ready and the rest of the time you hide. That's pretty much your job as a Japanese DD. And of course, scouting and capping and such things, but uh, there's less, less vulnerabilities while playing it. USDDs, on the other hand, is a much more active role. You're, you're on, unlike the Japanese DDs, your damage is split. L basically, let's say 80-20 split, with 80% being your guns and 20% being your torps. Later on in the game, uh, around T8, or actually with the way they're upgraded, later on the torps gain more significance, but uh, you'll always be a hybrid, where, where you always have to rely on both the guns and the DDs to do optimal damage. Whereas uh, Japanese DDs are mostly torp boats, they occasionally use their guns to add damage or fight other DDs, but in general it's not worth exposing themselves and uh, basically have people react to your position and so forth. So, US DDs. The first thing obviously you need to learn is something I call offensive smokes. I made a guide on this earlier, but since uh, it's been a while I'll reiterate it now. There's a Gnevni fishing up. My Wyoming on my right is spotting him, so I pop my smoke. I'm now completely concealed inside my smoke, I'm undetected, and I can shoot at the Gnevni while being undetected because the Wyoming on my right is still spotting him. This is called an offensive smoke. You are undetected, but you're still a, a you, you're using your smoke for the purpose of dealing damage, not for the purpose of saving yourself. That's why I use the premium smoke, you can buy it with uh, 22k credits. So that's why I use the offensive or so many smokes and a premium one so that I can smoke up and basically attack whenever I feel like it from complete safety. Or well, complete safety is arguable since there are ways to counter this like hydroacoustic and just torps into the smoke and so forth. But in general, this is one of the bread and butter skills of a USDD or a US basically a US gunboat. And uh, of course, in this case, he smoked up and he fled, so I'll just basically, I want to take the, get the full use out of my smoke, so I'll just start picking on any targets I see that are within my range. Here you also see one of the problems with, or basically one of the limitations of the US uh, DDs, which is the gun, gun arcs are horrendous. They are massively massive, 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 massive. You can see how high they arc across the air and how far ahead you have to aim to basically land something as soon as they start getting past 10 kilometers. So, while it seems powerful at first glance, you realize there is limitations to basically balance it out. And of course, but unlike, for example, the Russian DDs, which have very flat arcs and more powerful guns, the US DDs actually have uh, a decent range of their torps, even to the capability that they can still torp uh, much sooner than the Russian DDs can, and their torps are in general much more versatile. In this case, the Nicholas has a 5.5 km range on the torps, and it has torps on both sides of the ship. Once again, I'm harassing. You can see I'm detected now, my smoke finally ran out. The USDD smokes uh, last longer, and basically the smoke blooms longer than it does for the Japanese or Russian DDs. And uh, the higher up you go in tires, or tiers, on your USDD, the longer your smoke blooms, and the longer it lasts. So this is basically a scaling thing. I always recommend uh, to my subscribers that whenever you get a new USDD, the f in the very first game, pop a smoke and just sit in it, shooting, until you get detected, and then note the time it took for you to get detected, so you get used to the new time. So you have the, the new timer in mind. You'll, you'll know when you have to start moving or when you have to stop shooting. It's also worth noting that uh, USDDs can stealth fire, as you can see. Hi stealth firing is basically shooting without being detected. The concept of stealth firing is that uh, all ships in this game gain, gain a debuff when they shoot. 
It's roughly four kilometers for DDs, six kilometers for cruisers, and was it 12 for battleships? Something like that. It, it's a much more complicated formula actually than that. It uh, takes into, into account uh, gun caliber. But for simplicity's sakes, I'll simply say it's about four kilometers. So in this case, since my detectability is a bit more than six, if I stay roughly around 10, a bit more than 10, I will be able to stealth fire. I have a small margin where my guns can just barely reach and I'm still far enough away that even with the debuff from shooting, I'm not detected. That's called stealth firing. Some ships are much better at it, some ships excel at it, even cruisers can do it later. For example, the Zhao is a notorious example of a stealth firing cruiser in high tier who can sit back and uh, sh spam shells from outside of visibility. Of course, stealth firing, like all tricks, is not some sort of imba unbeatable trick. It's very easily countered. A cruiser or a carrier player leaving a scout plane around. Some ship who died around and left the scout plane uh, spinning around his uh, basically sunken ship will completely ruin your day. Any Japanese DDs who, who are not shooting but simply scouting and so forth. There are plenty of ways to counter it, but once again, it's one of the tools you have available as a US DD. In this case, I'm waiting to see if this St. Louis is going to push up. Okay, I waited, I waited to him to shoot. Now that he's shot, I'm smoking up and slowing down and starting once again popping an offensive smoke. The idea there was I was hoping that once he shot he got the shooting debuff meaning he was detected by from a much further distance so I would be able to smoke up and he would still remain detected. That's why I waited for him to shoot before I smoked up. Sadly no one else was really around that could detect him so this might be a bit of a wasted offensive smoke. I'm hoping to get something to shoot at but it's looking very very weak at the moment. I'm still gonna sit here for a moment because the St. Louis was last headed towards me. I'm also pinging my two battleships to basically join in on the battle because we are losing this game quite hard as you can see. We're basically dying everywhere so I'm hoping these battleships would instead of hugging the corner and the, hide and the side they would come and help us in the middle, help us with the battle. And uh, okay, now I s now the Saint Louis was spotted. He's moving away from me. So now that he's, I have identified where he is. Now I'm confident enough to move out of my smoke. I didn't want to move out of my smoke until I knew where he was because there's a possibility that he would charge me. And if I had moved out uh, too early or too late, either one, he would basically have a free shot at me. And while uh, even as a gunboat, you're still just as fragile as Japanese uh, DDs. In general, you want to avoid taking any damage at all because you risk losing your turrets. So you want to be very careful with taking damage, not just for the sake of dying, but for the sake of losing your armament, which happens quite often. But even with these short torps, you can do plays like I'm doing here. Use your terrain to your advantage. I often mention this. Use your, in this case, I'm keeping the island between these two guys. Also, you noted I was briefly spotted by a plane. I feel like I should touch on an important mechanic here. If you're spotted by a plane and you shoot torpedoes, your torpedoes will be spotted the entire way from the point they were seen, first seen by the plane all the way to the end. So any torp shot while there's a plane spotting you will be wasted because they will be so, so easy to dodge. In this case, I started taking on the Gnevni because first of all, okay, my torps hit that one ship that I was aiming for and killed him. In this case, I started fighting a Gnevni. Usually fighting Russian DDs is not recommended for a US DD unless, first of all, you get the jump on him, two, he's low HP, like this guy was, and three, you're close enough that you can offset his superior guns with your pure DPM. In general, uh, the Russian DDs have much flatter arcs and more powerful guns, but in pure damage wise, DPM wise, the US DDs usually beat them, but they have much uh, lazier arcs and have a much harder time hitting them. So if you're going to fight a Russian DD, make sure you engage at the last possible moment, like just before he's about to detect you, so you get the surprise factor and you're close enough. And in general, during the fight, you want to be closing in on him as well. Even though they have torps, you have torps as well, and you want to be able to get close to him, or within, let's say, four to five kilometers. That's where you'll be superior in the gunfight. Of course, if the Russian DD is good, he will simply turn tail and start kiting you. If that happens, you should disengage. It's just gonna end in misery if you try 
chasing him around while he uses his superior speed to flee and uses his superior guns to beat you from range. It's not worth it, just disengage, you can smoke up, you can turn around, stop shooting, whatever. Just bail. Not worth it. In this case, I'm starting, I'm, I'm picking a fight with the New York. As soon as I saw his turret start to turn towards me, once again, I pop a smoke. Offensive smoke that I talked that I talked about at the start of this vid and that I mentioned many times, but since there's probably new people watching these vids, once again, I'm using the Mayogi and the Wyoming behind me to spot him. The reason I smoked up this late and not closer to the island was because if I had smoked up closer to the island, then I would be blocking their line of vision with my smoke in which case they would not be able to spot him for me, in which case I would have nothing to shoot at. So I made sure I left a gap in between myself and the island, so they had plenty of vision on this New York before I smoked up. And now of course my goal here is not only the HE damage, but getting these fires. He got one fire and he repaired. This is something I often say is a huge mistake for battleship captains. You do never ever want to repair one fire if you're under fire. It's the worst thing you can do. As soon as someone repairs, you're the main target for me or for any basically HE fire based guy. If they see a cruise battleship repair, they're like, oh shit, we gotta shoot that guy. That's amazing. Because by repairing that first fire, you let everyone know that you won't have your fire available. And the battleship repair lasts very long it lasts especially long on US battleships, but it also has a very long cooldown. So now that I'm aware that, that his uh, repair is on cooldown, I'm obviously going to spam fires. Now you might also note that I'm constantly changing my crosshair around and trying to land these HE shells at different parts of his ship. That's because if you have started a fire on one part of a ship, for example battleships have four spots where they can be on fire. So if you have st started a fire on one spot, then you have to aim hit a different spot to start a second fire. If you keep shooting at the same spot where the fire is, well you're gonna do HE damage but you're not gonna start additional fires. In this case I decided to bail because one my smoke was running out, I knew that was happening based on the time, and two these two guys were spotted by my Mayogi. So once again I used the terrain to my advantage, keeping uh, the island between me and these cruisers, and of course using my torps to lay ambushes here, using the torps on both sides. Now that's done. I'm looking at the HP on the New York, he was pretty low. These guys are not coming for me, basically I have time while these guys sail away. They killed my other battleship, and now I realize a 2v1 and I think that Wyoming is probably going to die, so I'm gonna engage this uh, New York in battle without a smoke. Now of course he slowed down hoping to get the kill since he fought these cruisers, I would fight the cruisers. But instead I tried to hunt and down and finish this kill. He has so low HP that it's basically worth the risk. If you look at my rudder at the bottom of the screen, you can see I regularly switch, shift the rudder, especially when I see him fire. But you notice I'm almost never going straight. It's always turning, always shifting somewhere. That's because battleships reload slowly, but they hit very heavily. So you want to make yourself an especially hard target to hit. There's also the Kuma behind me that could possibly be shooting me. That's why I'm basically wiggling my ship back and forth, back and forth all the time. Making myself the hardest possible target to hit. Now I should be able to kill this guy off. I've dodged most of his shots. Come on, he's so close to dying. There we go, finished off the kill. And let's see if I can help this Wyoming with the Kuma now. Okay, the Phoenix shot at me. Kuma seems to be taking some decent damage. I'm capping as well, as you noticed, because this is uh, this domination mode, or what was it called? Zone mode, where if you're the guy in the cap, you will win. Let's see, start trying to land. You can see this massive arcs come into play now, and uh, that's basically the weakness of it. It's very hard to hit a uh, moving or agile target from range with these guns. I think this Kuma is about to torp. He's about to torp. No, he got the kill. But no, he got the torps off. The Kuma got the torps off. I think my Wyoming's dead. So I'm left... Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. So I'm left 1v1 with 8k HP. No, uh, no speed boost left, one smoke left, but no one's to spot against the Phoenix. 
So what I do here is obviously I land, I, first I shoot my torps and then I'm gonna basically bait him into going into them. Now he's probably gonna heading towards me but I want him to turn right so I basically present him a target and make it look like I'm rushing him. So he's turning right to avoid me and by turning right he's turning into my torps. You might have noticed that I switched to AP there and I actually sit about him. That's because close range your AP is very very potent. With this final 1v1 kill and win I managed to secure the victory for my team and uh, well yeah I got some good XP out of the game and hopefully this has displayed to you the basics of uh, US uh, destroyer gameplay. Damage wise I did uh, how much did I do? I don't know, 110k or so. I'll check, I'll calculate that later. Anyway, uh, as usual, I will be moving on to upgrades, modules, and captain perks. And as usual, I will start with the module upgrades. There's not much to talk about here. There's the hull upgrade, you should get it. Yes, you lose a turret getting it, but in return, you gain a significant amount of rate of fire. So there's no discussion. You want this hull upgrade because it gives you so much else you want as well. So definitely go straight for the hull upgrade, no questions asked. Upgrade wise, your guns are your bread and butter, so obviously want to keep them. So main battery mod 1. Once again, guns are your bread and, bread and butter, so you want accuracy. Now a lot of new players make the mistake of getting this mod, thinking, oh my god, it gives me 15% main battery traverse speed and it gives me 10% main battery loading time. What they don't understand is that plus 10% in this game literally means an additional 10%. So if your reload was 10 seconds and you equip this mod, now your reload is 11 seconds. So you're getting faster turrets at the cost of your reload. So this is not nearly as good as people make it out to be. So in this case, go for the accuracy. You want to be able to land those shots. Third, normally I would always suggest propulsion mod for DDs, but 0.5.3 is a bit of a different game. Now you can go for damage control system simply because these two are obsolete. Because when I move on to captain's perks, you can see that last stand is now a two point perk, which makes it pretty much a must have for most DDs. So easy to get. Anyway, captain perk wise, obviously situation awareness. You want to know if you're detected, very simple. Uh, secondary armament, must have, or well, not must have, but amazingly good. It's flat out. This is a flat out 10% uh, reload buff. As you can see, it's just minus 10% reload as opposed to the module that said plus 10%. And of course, 2.1, last stand, no discussion. Uh, you don't need an expert marksman mod on USDDs because their turret traverse is so good already that it's basically a waste of two points. Instead, in the past, people always took this simply because there were no good, good options, but now there's Last Stand, which is far superior. Three and Pointer, there could be some argument here to get Superintendent or to get Vigilance, considering you're fighting a lot of IGN DDs. But ultimately, I think this is more of a late game perk or like higher tier perk that it might become debatable. At lower tiers, the additional smoke and the additional speed boost will be far superior. In, at least in my opinion, I value it far more because it gives you the option to make smoke plays far more often at any time. And if you abort the smoke, it's not, you still have plenty to play with. It's not like you've, you've completely blown your game there. And for the fourth perk, I will be going for Demolition Expert or basically on my gearing, I can show you my gearing build right now. On my gearing I went for Demolition Expert and then of course for Concealment. Uh, the HP is pretty pointless because your problem is losing turrets, not actually getting killed. And the Advanced Range is pretty useless on USDDs because just because you can shoot further doesn't mean you can actually hit anything that's further because the arcs on these shells are so insane, so I never, never really value it. So, it's possible that if I get an 18 point captain on my gearing, I might give up my reload and instead get vigilance, but uh, that's a bit debatable and something worth experimenting. For now at least, uh, this is my preferred build path. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this pretty short little uh, Nicholas commentary in 0.5.3. I'll talk to you guys later.